Welcome back to daytime, everyone. Have you ever left the doctor's office and thought, I don't know what he just told me or he or she, and I didn't get my questions answered. So oh, yeah. you have to ask the doctor the right question to help them better understand what's going on with your life. Oh, yeah. So Daytime's resident doctor, Dr. Sharini Iyengar, a cardiologist at the Bradenton Cardiology Center, is here to talk about the importance of communication with your doctor and so both of you understand what's going on. And what I tell every patient is this. For effective treatment, we need to have effective communication. So don't be embarrassed when you come to the office. When I tell a patient, tell me, what is wrong with you? Don't feel hesitant to say, well, I have this issue, but I also feel this might be a problem as well. Bring it up, and if you don't really know what's wrong, write it down before you come in so you don't forget. Right, and maybe it's easier for some people who have real anxiety about sharing intimate problems, maybe if they write it down, it would be easier and just maybe hand it to you if, and, if they have a hard time verbalizing. And that's a perfect point, especially when they have a spouse or someone in the room they don't want to see it in front of. Right. Potentially right. they can hand you that paper and say, this is my concern, or this is something that I'm concerned about my spouse. Maybe you can tell a little bit more about what's going on here. What if you have a terrific doctor, there, but you just don't quite understand what the doctor is saying? Tell that physician, tell that person, please explain that again. Example, if I told you you had a myocardial infarction due to a ruptured atherosclerotic plaque, you may say, what exactly does that mean? And the layperson would say, it's a heart attack due to a ruptured or a blockage in your artery. Mm. If you didn't understand what I just said initially, you need to say, doc, tell me. In, Dumb terms. it down, Doc. Let Dumb us it down know for because mama. it's your body, and that's what comes first. All right. Uh, in general, what types of questions do patients have to ask in order to be uh, more in tune with their own health care? First thing, if I order a test, ask, why do I need this test? Mm -hmm. What is it going to show? What is it going to do for me? Second, if there is something on the test, what is the treatment? What are we going to do about it? Third, if there's a medication, well, what is the side effects of those medications? And fourth, probably one of the most important questions, which no patient really brings out forthright, does this interact with any other medications or does this interact with any over-the-counter or herbal medications of those sort of things? Because that's something a lot of patients don't talk about. Oh, by the way, I'm taking X, Y, and Z from the pharmacist or shall we say from the store, the GNC, that's whatever key. it might be. Or the health yeah. food store. Oh, yeah. And do I have to eat food when I'm taking this also? Empty stomach, uh, full stomach, night, daily, when to do it. Okay, mm -hmm. are there too many questions that you can ask? Now, there aren't. There's never too many questions, but prioritize. When you go to your physician's office and you're going there, for example, chest pain, talking about a small rash on the elbow shouldn't be on the top of the list. That chest pain should be the issue, and we should go from there, and then basically go down the list and see how important that really is to the topic of what the conversation so is at the time. filter your questions. Exactly. Think about it before you walk in, because you really want to have the optimal amount of time with your physician to discuss the most pressing issue. So if you have 30 questions, well, think about what the top three are first and go with that. I think if you've had an x-ray or something like an ultrasound, if you sit down with them and actually look at the pictures together, it really helps to understand the if they can point out what you're looking at. speaks a thousand words, absolutely. And another issue, too, is family history. It's something that most patients don't really bring out. So if you can come in the office and say, hey, I'm doing great, I'm feeling great, but talk a little bit about your history. If you know about your family, bring it up because that will gauge what's going to happen in the future potentially. Yeah, I mean, when you go to a doctor for the first time, typically you fill out a big form with your history on it. But if anything new arises, should you give your, you know, your doctor maybe even a file of, of things that are happening in your family? Definitely, because it's important to know, hey, you know what? Heart disease does run in your family. Oh, look at this. Your aunt, your uncle, your mother, someone just got diagnosed at this age. We need to screen you even more aggressively now to find out and prevent that heart attack from happening down the line. And this mm -hmm. can happen with other diseases as well. Okay, and if you switch doctors, make sure your records go with you. And that's very important as well, to make sure that there is a fluent transfer of these records because last thing you want is to repeat unnecessary tests and things to be done to you that have already been done maybe one, two, three months prior. Mm -hmm. And all that takes is a quick phone call. That's it. All right, thank you, Dr. Iyengar. Now, if you would like to learn more about helping your doctor help you, you can find Dr. Iyengar on Facebook by going to our website, which is daytimeonline.tv. Stay well, with us. Be right back.